Welcome back to another Block Studios. Yes, we're back. Interviewing a Frenchman today. <laughs> yes, very exciting. Potentially first one ever. Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> so Isaac, I've heard we have a new drop coming out with uh, another block and it's with Layback Luke and Rehab. And so I'm pretty keen for it. Anotherblock.io on the 19th of August, Rehab and Laidback Luke. Here we go. Thank you so, so, so much for coming on. I know we've talked about this for a while. Actually, you were one of the first people when we started this podcast really? probably a few months ago now. You're one of the first people on our list because I love some of the stuff you're doing and you've planted yourself there in Europe and you know, you've know you made a great community there. And so pumped to finally have you on. So thank you so much uh, for doing thank this. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really happy to be there. The first thing I noticed in looking through, we pride ourselves in doing a bit of research here. And so the first thing I noticed is you're a very busy man because you do a lot of things. Um, (laughs) and so it's pretty wild. And so I was going to maybe step through some of those. The first thing I thought was kind of interesting, the podcast that you do as well, right? So you have a podcast called NFT morning and it's every weekday morning, uh, just before nine o'clock, I think you start and tell me if I'm wrong here. Is it sometimes on clubhouse and sometimes on Twitter spaces? You know, how do you know all of this? You know, I'm really impressed, you know, by, (laughs) by your information. Yeah, exactly. You know, we do it like uh, sometimes on actually, you know, we use uh, these apps like Clubhouse and Twitter Space as a studio like you are using uh, currently yeah. Riverside, for example. Uh, just, you know, we use it, uh, but with a small audience, you know, we have like 50 ish people uh, there, you know, because you have to be there in the morning. But then, you know, with, we record it then to podcast it on uh, audio podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple and everything like this. But so, yeah, but we yeah. do the recording every morning uh, as a live podcast, I would say. That's amazing. Yeah, that's really that's cool. cool. And another one of the really cool projects that I saw you um, you work on is Non-Fungible Conference. Andreas from Another Block um, went, it would have been this year. Next year's one is in April in, um, in Lisbon in Portugal. One of the cool things that I've kind of found out about Portugal in the last, um, in the last year is they actually have really low capital gains tax a lot of oh, they also had like nice. a solana conference there which one of the bigger investors i think um i think david Sachs went to the solana conference in um in in lisbon portugal so um is it is it actually because there's a huge there's a larger community in lisbon because of that lower capital gains or do you think it's just a really cool place to hang out I, I, you know I, I believe it's a mix of a lot of things actually you know but it's true that right now portugal yeah you know we cannot deny the tax uh, aspect mm. is playing a role but i believe that you know if you would have the same tax environment but uh i don't know like uh in north of uh, a small city or somewhere in uh, i don't know in north europa uh, i believe it will not be the same you know i believe that you have on one hand yeah the environment and not only the tax not only for crypto but also you know for the startup world uh it's uh, becoming a lot of new startup and in the hope of web 2.0 also startup decided to have their european headquarter in lisbon now like google and uh like uh, oh wow companies like this you know used to be in other countries and now they have decided mm. maybe for tax reason also but you know to, to move <laughs> here and so uh you know you have this big conference uh, web 2 conference called the web summit that uh moved here so yeah, the startup ecosystem start to boom. In the same time, you know, as it was quite cheap and affordable, uh, it happened, happened something like uh, in Berlin, I would say, like uh, 15 years ago, where a lot of artists, you know, start immigrating also in the same place because, uh, you know, like a re- flat are quite affordable and, you know, you can mm-hmm. live, you know, you have like this community of people, you know, living with art and party and happy with that. And so a lot of people, you know, moved from Berlin also just to, yeah, live with their art and party and go to Lisbon. And at the end of the day, the weather, the good food, the prices, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's quite affordable compared with everywhere else in Europe. Make it like uh, becoming a new, fresh uh, European capital. So I think, you know, all of this, and this is why yeah, I decided also, even if I, I spend uh, most of my time in Paris, actually, but I decided to do it in Lisbon because, yeah, you know, for me, 
it's a bet on the next uh, 10 years, basically. Yeah, wow, that's so cool. Um, okay, so starting a conference is a big deal. And I think we're talking pretty decent sized conference here. From what I can tell, we're talking maybe 1,500 guests. And I think maybe you're expecting even more than that this year, which is amazing. Could you talk us through a little bit of like where the idea came from? Had you seen it at worked in Web2 and you're like, I can do like a Web3 version of this. And, and what are some of the logistics like for people who haven't put on an event before, which is going to be 99% of the people watching this? How hard is it? Like, give us a sense of the, the logistics involved. It's actually, it's quite huge. But, you know, to be fair, I, my background is event organization. So, you know, I founded a company like 10 years ago called, Hack, you know, Be My App, and then also on the brand hackathon.com. And so, uh, basically, you know, we've, we've been pioneering the hackathon format and selling uh, tech events to corporate, to make it simple. Uh, so, I've been producing, uh, you know, the company the last 10 years, something like 1,000 events. So I, I have a strong event background. And so, yeah, when I, you know, I think it was like uh, well, the idea came actually, you know, when I was going to some conferences uh, and I, I, you know, I love events. I really love, you know, real life, you know, because, you know, we, 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 we it's great, you know, to meet here, but, you know, I'm pretty sure that Nathan and Isaac, you know, when I would meet you in Australia or in Europe, you know. Yeah, we, it'll be great. You know, it would be great to have a beer together and chat and be happy with that. And so it's it's perfect. And uh, so I love that. And so I decided, uh, you know, when I was going to some events, I didn't feel like, you know, the NFT uh, vibe. Uh, NFT vibe is a bit different, you know, from the DeFi community. Uh, you know, for me, it's not exactly the same. And it's not exactly the same culture, the same long range yeah. way of living. So, you know, I've been going to a lot of crypto events. It's cool. It's great. And they talk about NFTs and you have some nice NFT speakers, but it's not the same community. Most of the people I'm talking from the, in the DeFi world, I say I'm an NFT maximalist because this is what I am at the end of the day. They say, oh, yeah, NFT. Yeah, I like the technology. It's nice, but I'm not really into that. Oh, it's booming. Yeah, but, you know, they don't know really much about that. And so I said, I want to do something dedicated to this new community, you know, community mixing art lover and uh, degens. I think mm -hmm. this is, uh, you know, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. basically. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I started working on, on this because as I had this, you know, background and on the one hand, you know, I didn't feel like, you know, yeah, for me it was missing. I said, okay, let's do this event. And to be fair, at the beginning, I didn't want to do something big, you know. Say, okay, let's start slow. You know, we can do a nice event for, yeah, 1,000 people, something like this. And, you know, damn, this world is so crazy. You know, we <laughs> end up with 2,500 people and, uh, you know, the place, uh, you know, we booked a bigger place and we booked, uh, you know, we yeah, we had to create some tents around the venue to... Oh, so you had to change it because of the engagement, like it was blowing up. Now, to be fair, you know, we had the two options. Wow, yeah, that's so cool though. At the end of the day, we, we, yeah, we, we, we ended that's up... That's amazing. Doing... But you know, yeah, you know, the second option when I visited this Palacio at the beginning was so big for me. I told my, you know, the girl I'm working with, Dorothy, I told her, are you crazy? You know, it's huge. We we'll never <laughs> do something in this kind of place. And this is where we end up at the end of the day, because, you know, when, you know, you don't know how it works exactly, but at the moment, you know, the community start to like it and you see people tweeting and you see, you know, people uh, that you are fan, uh, you know, yeah, starting to say, oh, I will go to Lisbon for this event. And then, you know, it's, it's becoming like something. Yeah, it's becoming something. And so then, you know, you, yeah, you have the beginning of the community coming there. So yeah, it's something. Then, you know, in terms of organization, it's, uh, I think, you know, it's a mix of uh, creativity. This is what we have in this team. You know, I've been working with great creative directors uh, that uh, have been hiring for the event and a great, uh, also people coming here yeah, from the fashion industry and trying to good, find a good mix, you know, to have the good creativity on one hand. You need the good, also good people, you know, to work mm. with, basically, you know, because yeah. it's, it's huge, you know, when we build, you know, for, for example, an event like this, we, we, we had just, we used three days to set up everything. You know, creating the walls, creating the, 
the rooms, uh, building, you know, the tents, uh, you know, all the booths, of course, the cartoons, creating rooms. You know, it's, it's just crazy, you know. And so on the one hand, you need to think well and have the good 3D and have the good people to think. On the other hand, you need the good people to make it happen. And at this moment, there is one thing that is important is, you know, yeah, you know, work with people you trust. And, you know, it's complicated because I, I, uh, it was the first time I was working on events in Portugal, so I didn't have the network. So, you know, at the beginning, I made some mistake to find the good partners. You know, we make some, uh, we you know, when you start to work with some people and they are not responsive and they say, yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry. You know, it's always, you know, it's complicated. And we had the chance, you know, to find some good partners to work with at every step. So, you know, furniture, you know, it's, it's small, a lot of details, you know furniture, a setup, sound, AV, internet. And so you need to find, you know, the good balance, you know, to make it work. And so all this stuff called the production, uh, then, you know, at the end of the day, then, you know, you're just here to give the great idea and be sure that they can be done. And don't be too crazy, even if I like to be, but, you know, at the <laughs> moment, you, know, you need to, to respect, you know, to have the idea that you would like to do and then to reduce expectations to say, okay, Let's keep it for next year to make things well. And maybe next time, you know, we'll do it a bit more crazy uh, yeah. because you cannot do everything. Uh, that's yeah, a good but... teaser for next year. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Exactly. Ah, you don't want to release, good. absolutely, you don't want to release the best of the best yet. There's, you know, more. You're, you're, There's more. You're leaving iterations for everyone to come. I like it. That's no, great. This is, I, I think that this is when you are like entrepreneur. Uh, you always, you know, when you leave the event, you all, you know, you already think, about how you will do it next, you know, and how you will improve and what you can do. And it's great because, you know, everybody tell you it's great and, you, you know, the vibes is, you know, everybody loves it. I have such good feedback from people and community and people say, yeah, that they like how it was organized and, you know, all the details because it's really important, all the details we've been working on. But then, you know, you say, okay, it's nice. But what you see is, oh, I hear it was wrong. Here it was wrong. We need to improve that. We need to improve that. And also, you know, you want to make it a bit stronger, I would yeah. say, to make it simple. But this is why next year, you know, we are working on a 10,000 people event, you know, to make it a bit bigger. Yeah, cool. Oh That's my God. That'd be a very big scale. That'd be, that'd be great. That's crazy. So in, the, in those events, um, it's, it's looked like there was a lot of really cool displays and a lot of lighting setups, you know, the smoke machines, the, uh, everything like that. I've seen, I've seen a lot of the, um, the, the pictures from those, uh, and that's, that's a lot of displaying those kind of digital world assets in the physical world. One thing that I went and had a look at was one of your most popular episodes, uh, which was about displaying NFTs in the physical world. And so, uh, there were a few options mentioned, like for example, you could display your NFTs on Apple TV and Android TV um, with apps like Nifty Gateway and um, Async Art, as well as there were options for frames, like there was a Samsung frame um, option and Infinite Objects, which is another um, really cool product, which is which is like kind of making specific NFT partnerships and, and making frames like that. Uh, and then, of course, those are all simply some physical products that people can get a hold of. But there's options like uh, metaverse options like Decentraland, for example. Uh, so do you think owning digital assets should be kind of something to be really happy to display in the physical world? Or do you think that, uh, for example, should it should it be more of a, a gradual move to the metaverse? Like, For me, you know, to be honest, I believe that digital asset will stay digital first. I mean, I'm pretty sure... You know that okay whatever you know in, okay in the virtual world and in the physical world we are just at the beginning we are not ready we don't have the solution so far but i'm pretty sure that you know in few uh, months or few years every virtual conference i will do on zoom or whatever you know instead of getting uh, this uh, uh you know like a hawaiian beach provided by microsoft you know i will have my own background uh, that I own basically, and that I'm proud, you know, to 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 work with. Uh, you know, at you know, we don't realize we st it start to happen with social media and with this uh, profile picture stuff. But you know, it will start with profile picture, then with banner, then you know, I believe we will be able to skin 
a bit more, you know, everything we are interacting with in our digital. It don't, you know, maybe it could be a 3D immersive metaverse, you know, as we see it, but we, even at a slower level, you know, everywhere we are interacting with the current existing metaverse, you know, that is already there, you know, the web and the social media, I believe, you know, that NFTs, you know, will be happy to display them and we will find a lot of new way to start to display them. So I believe, you know, it's digital first. Then it does not mean that, it, not, you know, it's not bad, you know, to display it in physical things. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, for example, at home, I have a Samsung frame and I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty happy, you know, to display my art blocks on this and, uh, you know, to, to let people visit this and say, oh, you know, your, your art blocks is pretty cool. Uh, the same, you know, I have some friends, you know, using the Apple watch or something like this. I don't like watches, but, you know, I think it's pretty cool, you know, to display that, you know, like a jewels, you can have some jewels, you can have a few things, but it's only one or two NFT, you know, that you will display this way in the metaverse or in digital, you know, you have a whole collection that you can have in different use cases. And for me, this is where it's happening. Of course, then as an event organizer, you need to find ways to magnify NFTs. And, you know, if you have a nice collection with like a lot of screens showing NFTs, you know, you can, you know, it's all about let people feel an emotion. And so you can try to find ways as you say, you know, you can use screens, you can use app, you can use uh, even, you know, beamers, and there are different ways to do it, or even hologram solution, now there are more and more things. You know, the whole thing is about the scenography and how you try, you know, to let people feel an emotion. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I might tie that into the next thing that I was hoping to talk about, which... <laughs> So you're talking about um, Metaverse there and you're talking about Decentraland and stuff. So another um, Metaverse project is Sandbox, right? And Sandbox is originally um, from, is it Paris or it's at least from France? Um, and uh, another, I think another project is like Ledger, which is a wallet, uh, one of the bigger wallets, to be honest, um, it is also from France. And so I noticed that you're involved with a project called NFT Factory, right? And so both of these projects are involved. And there's a, it's like about 51 uh, you know, leaders within this industry who are involved with the project. And so it looks like it's supposed to um, open officially in September this year. Could you tell our audience a bit about what that is and what they could expect if they were to go and see it? Yeah, actually, you know, I think it's really interesting. Um, all this started uh, with a conversation I had with uh, Jean-Michel Payon. He's, uh, you know, the basically right now the chief of staff uh, at Ledger. Oh, cool. And, you know, he discovered Bitcoins and cryptocurrencies like uh, I think it was like uh, seven years ago thanks to a building in the street called the Bitcoin house la maison du Bitcoin cool. on say. and it was just a place where you can walk in and buy a Bitcoin and come back you know uh, with your uh, with, a, uh, with your wallet and your first Bitcoin basically and, you know, it was really something really strong to let people understand and discover that. At the end of the story, this Bitcoin house, you know, they, they evaluate and it became Ledger, you know, they, because uh, they had to find ways, they had to find ways, you know, to let people have a physical way to live because they say, you know, if we want people to understand that they have something, we need to find something. And so, you know, they created Ledger. And so at the end of the day, you know, it became Ledger. Wow. And I, I use some shortcuts a bit longer, but this is the, the, the story, That's cool. basically. And, uh, and so, you know, he told me, okay, we should do the same with NFTs, you know, find a place in the street with, you know, visible windows. Anyone in the street can walk in and say, oh, what is it? You know, come inside and basically leave the shop with their first NFT. This is the main mission. You know, I think it's really basically... Let people discover NFTs and get their first one. So we are working right now, you know, on the, with the architect and everything, you know, to make it work. But, you know, basically the main idea is, you know, really it looks like a gallery on the first floor. You know, you can watch and then, you know, you can have some trainings and get your first NFT. This is the, the main thing. Second thing is, of course, a hub, you know, because we 
really strong community. And it's true that right now in France and in Europe, we have some cool, really uh, important companies, you know, as you mentioned, Ledger, the Sunbugs. Uh, we have one called Sorar that is really like uh, for, you know, football card and uh, that is becoming quite important also. And also in, yeah, in a, a lot of topic, you know, we have this kind of companies and we say, you know, we need to have now, on the one hand, we have key leaders. On the other hand, when you look, you know, the media and the papers and when you see politics talking about it, you know, it's just a scam and it's something, you know, that uh, will not list. And, you know, we don't want to do some kind of lobbying or anything. We just want people to understand what it is. And, you know, the bet is if, you know, most of the people in Europe have their own wallet, then you don't need any question anymore. You don't need to think about politics. You don't need to think, you know, everybody who owns NFTs. This is the end of the story. This, this is the project. And as the project is really ambitious, you know, we started, you know, basically with a, yeah, we started with a group of seven people. It was Sébastien Borget from the Sandbox. It was the guy who founded the Museum of Crypto Art, uh, the first museum in the Crypto Voxel, uh, called Moka Benoit Couty. It was, a uh, yeah, so the guy from Ledger, Jean-Michel Payon, it was, uh, so, you know, different key people. And then, you know, as we started and all of us are connected with other entrepreneurs, okay, it became 51 and now actually it's one, 128 <laughs> co-founders. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we are like 128 co-founders. Wow, wow. uh, and uh, so of this uh, entity. Mm. And so we have, and then, you know, what we create also, it's a token. That is a membership token for 1,000 people. And basically, it gives them special access to everything happening in the place. For example, the, you know, the, the second floor is dedicated to members. So it's a place when you can get a coffee and do your business meeting. And if you own the token, you know, can have access to the place. All the events we will organize, like meetups, you know, every day or stuff, you can pre-register if you are a member. So, you know, you know how it is sometimes meetups are quickly sold out or for some reason. So it's a way to get it. And so it's a way, you know, to, to have priority basically. And so to create a kind of membership club yeah. uh, based on token. Wow. That's, and, yeah, uh, that's really good. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's pretty ambitious project. And actually, you know, I believe, uh, you know, yeah, we are experimenting that opening uh, end of September. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, it, if it works well, you know, would we'll be a, yeah, we'd be happy then to to open different factories oh, yeah. uh, in different cities. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool. It's it's almost like you're taking your live event model and and applying it to an all the time event. Like it's like, oh yeah, you can you can come all the time. This is a a business that's always going. It's not a one time yeah. specific exactly. thing. So it's really a cool. less stressful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think you would get a lot more network as well out of that because you're getting you're getting all of these co-founders that you're actually working yeah, with. So right. you're you're getting a stronger network, you know, with um with all of those people. One of the topics that really caught my eye when I was looking through some of your content was about uh, NFT inheritance law. So this one's a, a bit of a pivot, but this was um this was really cool. So I know with um with stocks in Australia, for example. Uh, you an individual buys stocks and they get this um, they get this holder identification number uh, and then it's matched up with this big central database called Chess basically and um, and that's so, and something that I'm interested in in the land of decentralized products is what happens to your NFTs when you die. So uh, I know I know that was something that um, that you discussed. I've never thought about it. Now I'm wondering. I realized, <laughs> I realized I've never thought about it before, and so I was like, oh yeah, what. What's the decentralized equivalent of of being able to take what you have and and give it to your next of kin? You know, uh, I think mean, you know uh, it's really. I, I don't know how you know that. We, I think you know when I talked about it, it was in French. If I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you. Yeah, but, yeah, this, yeah, I mean it's cool. This is what we do every morning. You know, in this podcast, you know, thinking. You know, we have some sessions like this, and so yeah, we've been thinking about you know because it came also with the die of you know. Uh, an artist, pretty strong French artist, actually called Alotamoni, who is a OG and a really referent, uh, who passed. Uh, I think it was like five months ago, and so then you know it opened 
a lot of thinking about, you know, then, you know, the transmission to his family and uh, how things are going. And so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you have like tech solution that exists. This is the uh, people who uh, thought this, th you have this uh, uh, protocol uh, or blockchain, whatever, I don't know what it is exactly, it's a protocol called Ternoap. And what they do, they create like time capsule. So uh, basically it's kind of a, a, a wallet that, you know, can be open only under specific uh, conditions, for example. And so you define this and you can say it will happen only if my uh, notary, you know, give this passcode to my legal, to my legacy. I don't know. Or it can happen only in 20 years uh, if the person uh, have this information or only, you know, you can define some things, some stuff like that. So they define some time capsule and they've been working, you know, uh, they are experimenting this uh, with some uh, lawyers, basically, you know, to have a solution when you can go to your lawyer and uh, basically, you know, write uh, your, your, yeah, basically your, your, uh, the same way, you know, that you would do it uh, on paper. And so then, you know, the, the, the lawyer, notary in French, this is what it is, can execute it and say to uh, yeah to your child basically that you know, according to this you know uh, this is the the way to unlock the wallet and so they can do it this way for example. That's it's, really good insight. That's cool. I think you know yeah it's it's interesting you know it's interesting because of course you know I'm pretty sure maybe you know that it will happen that some people oh, yeah. will die and they will be the only one to know their seed phrase. Yes, correct. <laughs> and uh, and so it's uh, you know it could be it could be potentially terrible. So uh, so yeah yeah you know there are different ways. What I learned basically it's normally you will have to declare because you could have soft ways. You know you say for example, you know my seed phrase in the in the safe in the bank, and so you know basically you know when you die everything that is uh, inside of the safe will go you know to your yep. child. It would be the one way to do it, but it's not the legal way, but it could work also. So, but yeah, I think it's interesting to think about it. And when we've been think, doing this room, we've been thinking a bit more also, and thinking then it's a bit uh, interesting. You could have a kind of, uh, in your legacy, you know, this is what they do, these people in Ternoa. You don't, you, you do like, a, 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 you can give also an environment like your song, uh, your pictures and events, you know, your wordings. So in the future, you know, thanks to some AI stuff, you know, people could recreate a new version of yourself uh, thanks to, you know, what you led to them, you know, uh, you know, just an AI, you know, they could chat with their grand, grand, grandfather or something like this. And I think, you know, but, okay, then, you know, it's really like a science yeah. fiction. But it's too far. Oh, man, that's <laughs> a really interesting point, isn't it? Oh, man, that's a rabbit warren as well, because like, <laughs> it's a little off topic, but I remember uh, downloading this app once. I can't remember what it was called, but it basically uh, generated a, an AI friend for you. And so you could you could message the friend and as you would, you would uh, have conversation, it would learn what you wanted to talk about and it would start re like responding in that way. And so to be able to then put some attributes of, a, of an actual person in that and then, you know, take it into a metaverse situation where there's some sort of physical representation of that person, you can interact with them. That's crazy. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I, that's I cool. This, you know, we yeah. couldn't finish without talking about uh, NFT Revolution, which is a book um, which I believe you wrote, came out last year. And um, looks like you can tell us what the audience sort of was hoped, what kind of audience you were kind of writing this for. But it looked like it was maybe for anyone because the, it was like four sections, which talked about the history talked about notable platforms, notable people, and then what knowledge someone needs to sort of interact in the uh, the space, which is Web3 and, and stuff like that. Did you want to talk a little bit about what the book was about and uh, just give us a bit of an insight into that? I think you got the point. Uh, the idea was to let my father uh, be able to understand NFTs. So it was really like, uh, at the very, very beginning, it was just about explaining. So first step, explaining the crypto movement, 
you know, because it's political, it's, uh, you know, cultural, societal, and economical, of course. But, you know, understanding, you know, that it's not just, you know, understanding from where it comes, what is the idea, and why, you know, it's programmed to become bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, this is my, my, you know, I think, you know, all the people in the space, you know, from what you see, you know, basically from what we see, you know, the idea was to compare a bit uh, cryptocurrencies and especially Bitcoin at the beginning, but then, you know, all the cryptocurrencies movement as a religions. Oh, yeah. And, you know, as oh. religions, you know, as a, even, you know, Christianism, maybe. It started with small people, a bit crazy, and then it became a main movement. And uh, then, you know, at the very, very beginning, it was true, small believer. And then, you know, it became a reality uh, because like everything, you know, the more you believe in something, the more it will, it become a reality. And so this is the point, you know, with everything that human is able to create, uh, you know, you create your own myth. And so, you know, the new myth that we are creating now, the, it's something that stick with the uh, the century we are discovering with digital, with the democracy crisis, with the institution crisis. So all of this, you know, make a new story that we want to believe in, basically. And so this is what we explain. And so basically we try to explain that we believe that it's just the beginning and all this, you know, religion uh, will become more important. And then, you know, the, this is basically what we explain. And so then historically how it came and how history came into the place and what is an NFT, of course. And, uh, but, you know, try to make it really simple and understandable for anyone. And then, you know, we talk about history. What, you know, how it started, you know, RFPP, CryptoPunks, why it is so specific at every step. And then, you know, what are the key platforms that came into the place? And what are the key artists? Because, you know, art is quite important in this book. Who are the key artists? What we could call the blue chip artists now, something like this. And then at the end of the story, how can you become first a collector or an amateur, then a collector, and then potentially an investor? But it's like a, but first, you know, you need to like it, then to collect, and then maybe, you know, you will become an investor, but it's more complicated. So, um, so this is, yeah, the book is, this is the idea. And then, you know, at the beginning, we had just the text. And then you say, yeah, you know, we're talking a lot about art. So we decided also to have, you know, to include all the artwork or many artworks we've been talking about. And also to include the QR code of all this artwork. So we had something like 300 uh, QR code in the book. And so, you know, a lot of people really like it because they discover, they scan, they discover, they, they read more on the, you know, it's a mix, it's an hybrid book, basically, because, you know, you're talking about digital format, so you need to show the digital format on mobile phone or uh, on laptop from people. So this is the, yeah, this is how it started. And what we did also, we commercialized it. I think it was pretty innovative when we did that, because it was uh, in May, uh, yeah, one, one year ish ago, in May 2021. Uh, we commercialize it as an NFT. So, you know, 300 yeah. uh, NFTs, you have I saw to that. buy one. And if you have this NFT, you can then redeem the PDF and later redeem the printed version. And so then, you know, then even on the second hand market, you know, people trade, you know, I really like to experiment token. I think it's, this is the idea. For the non-fungible conference, we did this ticket also that was a, uh, non-fungible token, of course, but we did it the, the good way with artists. You know, we had the chance to add Xcopy and Neurocolor to collaborate to do the ticket. And uh, even now, you know, the event happened like is uh, happened three months ago. You know, and it worked because we had like one thousand two hundred people who minted, and so you oh, use cool. just the ticket. And even now, people are lifting the floor. Oh. I don't know why. Oh. But, you know, you still have some people. <laughs> You know, the flow, yeah, is 0 0.5 or 0.6. Does it give them any other utility after the conference? Like, does it help them for the next conference or anything like that? You can guess. Ah, okay, okay, related. okay, okay, okay. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Mm, Speculating. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can well, uh, is the uh, is the book is the book in um in English your your book available? No, in yeah, we're working on the 
you know, actually, you know, I did it. I wanted to do it fast at the beginning, so I did it uh, in French. But now we're doing a, we'll do a second version uh, that will be in English first. You know. Oh, excellent. Well, John Carp, uh, we've had NFTMorning.com. We've had the Non-Fungible Conference. We've got NFT Revolution. Uh, it sounds like you're doing a lot of interesting things. Where can people find out more? What's the main one that you want to send people to? Is it is it your Twitter? Is it your website? What's the... Um... Yeah, I think my Twitter account is uh, quite summarizing what I do. Uh, so yeah, uh, twitter.com slash John Carp. I think is the, the simplest way Sick. to find me. Excellent. Amazing. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show, John. Thank you. Thank you very much.